welcome to the Plague Hive. I'm once again joined by Oli, aka Archon Altus, and today we're bringing you a deck tech video for his contract Uzuri deck. Uh, the list has been putting up some good results, both online on Telishar as well as in paper. Um, in the recent Pro Tour Baltimore, Tao Tao Chu has piloted a fairly similar list uh, with a decent bit of success. He didn't make it to top eight due to a technicality, but the uh, list was running very well and looking pretty good. So without further ado, uh, we'll jump straight into it. Um, you can find the full deck list with sideboard guides down in the video description. Oli has been kind enough to put all of this out there. Um, it's all fully typed out and explained in the, the deck. And today we're giving you a video on it to really get into detail, um, get over all of the choices and give you the bigger picture. So um, without further ado, let's get into that. Oli, why don't you go off the, over the general plan that the deck is trying to accomplish and what is sort of like the big picture? What's the idea here? Yeah, so I mean, it's generally but turn by turn, you're trying to block out efficiently whilst presenting good on hits. So some disrupt and some just mill their deck to eliminate threats and make them uh, really make every use of every card in their deck mm -hmm. to try and actually kill you. Um, so it's a lot, depending on the matchup, you uh, can give the ability to fatigue quite easily. Mm -hmm. When you uh, banish decks, uh, you've got about 19 contract cards. So with additions of Eradicate and Leave No Witnesses, you're banishing quite, you can banish quite a lot of their deck mm -hmm. <clears throat> if they all land. So, the general, yeah, that's the general style of the deck. It's quite a lot more uh, mid-range or fatigue in certain cases than the other versions like Redline. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I mean fatigue would, would sort of be I think the the natural I suppose idea that your opponent is gonna have when you would put down Arachne, for example, right? Which is like yeah. what this originally um was. Like this is basically an Arachne list where you take out the the parts of Arachne that maybe aren't that good. I suppose, and then you just yeah. you just slap in like the best bits of Azuri, which is basically uh, isolate, I suppose, and then like some pretty devastating on hits, right? So yeah, um, it's like I basically was uh, card for card my Arachne deck mm -hmm. and just transferred it over to Azuri with a few additions. Yeah, and yeah. they're basically the same kind of play style. Yeah. Okay. So like just slow methodical grind them out basically and just present these constant breakpoints that have like not immediately disruptive on hits but um if you if you manage to land enough contracts and banish like a significant part of their deck it adds up and at some point they just yes. run out of gas and you can kill them yeah um, the value um, adds sense. up the longer the game's yeah, go yeah yeah like i mean that's generally the fatigue idea right like mm -hmm. they have to give you cards whether they block or not, they're losing cards from the decks. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so why don't we go over this? Um, let's just start with like the core of the deck, maybe, and just start with like the equipment core, right? So these mm -hmm. these four cards up here um, that you would probably would say are like this is like your default, I guess, kind of equipment loadout, right? Yeah, definitely. Um... I think the assassin equipments generally uh, all share the same cards most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black Tech Whisper has always been the best option. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. One block Snapdragons at its uh, yep. Well, almost worst. But uh, in this list, you can quite you can get quite a few activations out of it for a game because mm -hmm. with the contracts with the silver, so you get a lot more value out of Snapdragons because. You're also getting every life a life per activation yeah 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 great like that's that's um, generally something uh, that yeah. i've been missing like a little bit um because i've been mostly playing like a uh, red line uzuri build right um and in in a red line build it's really like yeah black text is just snapdragons with battle worn that's mm -hmm. that's pretty much it like maybe you'll get to buy it back once per game if you get a little bit lucky with your leave no witnesses mostly 
but for the most part you have it once and then if you get it twice it already feels pretty good but once is really realistically what you can look at uh, yes, and, yeah, and i imagine yeah. being able to to get that like i don't know three or maybe four times per game or so that that could be pretty massive actually against ninjas and rangers i feel mm -hmm. like you you can buy them pretty consistently mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. half your contracts hit by every card yeah yeah against aggressive decks right they don't want to block mm -hmm. uh, and then you get the banish on top you get the silver and then you can do stuff with that so speaking of that silver right like you've also got the the mask of perdition mm -hmm. um in the head slot here which makes sense right because it's just like another silver outlet and it actually lets you generate yeah, more milk. silver and accelerate your fatigue plan so it's just like it makes sense um, yeah um it's great it's it's most of your silver generation comes from this card mm -hmm. it's uh, especially great on double contract turns mm -hmm. where you can just get like it just doubles your value on it yeah yeah it like you can you could get like four to five silver if you get really lucky with the banishes mm -hmm. um out of like two attacks that's pretty great um so generally like which one would you prioritize right like i mean if you're swimming in silver you know like you got eight or nine or something and it happens yeah. occasionally yeah. obviously you can just buy back both but i would assume in most cases you maybe generate enough silver to reliably buy back one of the two every turn um or maybe every yeah, other turn so, or so so which think, one would you normally prioritize like the mask or the black text what's what's your choice it's there definitely matchup dependent mm -hmm. but generally black text get more value okay um because they can be your spike turns so yeah. i always like having them ready whenever it need to be mm -hmm. um mask is great for just if you're going for the fatigue it's just great to buy back because it's just an extra card yeah out of their deck. um and it's more general generation so it's kind of replaces itself quite a lot of the time mm -hmm. which is quite nice if you want to just continue for uh, fatiguing um if you're not getting use out of black decks you always buy your mask constantly back instead mm -hmm. until you get your boots and then you want to prioritize boots again when you right. don't have them so i, I guess <laughs> it's, it's maybe like against you know aggressive decks where you have to expect that you need to block a lot um, I assume it can be hard to keep the the hand that you need to make like a big black text play, right? Um, yes. So maybe there it's it's easier to get the mask, right? So you both accelerate the fatigue, so they run out of threats sooner, um, and then you also get the consistent uh, additional block, um, so you get some extra health out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe that's where you want to kind of prioritize getting the mask, and then maybe at some point if you can pivot, you know. They run yeah. mostly out of threats and, and they let you have like slightly larger hands. And I mean, like a, a black text hand for assassin can really be like two cards, right? Oh, yeah. Like you have death it's touch in arsenal well, and like sorry. a codex of frailty and tunic up. Yeah. That's like a, a two card pivot hand where you can just be like, okay, this is 12, 12 to 14 damage um, or even 16, depending on, on how they block it um off of two cards which is just nuts like um that's that's pretty insane so we got tunic yeah i mean tunic yeah like it's just a standard it's a good card yeah. what can you say about tunic i would i would love to be able to run redback shroud honestly and like if any deck would be able to run it it's this one right because you've got all of the silver generation in there but there's just not enough good yeah. as attack reactions that cost anything right that's kind of the issue with it yeah and i've just taken out razor reflex so that's uh yeah. it's lost extreme value um yeah, yeah. one day one day it'll be good and i'm excited for that because that'll be fun more silver yeah. generation mechanics yeah. it's always great i love it it's definitely a car that that i can see having a lot of value down the line but mm -hmm. currently it's tunics just better right like you're playing a fatigue deck you're expecting the game to go long um so if you yeah. can squeeze like four to five resources out of tunic it's great right i'm also using that one resource generally for not using attack reactions so like yeah. that'll be attacks like that touch and mm -hmm. shroud just doesn't have that yeah 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 you would be losing the uh tunic death touch and you'd be very upset by that yeah yeah no no that's like that's one of the best lines of the deck definitely like death touch from arsenal or death touch off of codex and then you can just play it for free because you have the tunic it's mm -hmm. it's pretty good 
Um, then we got flick knives, and I know there's there's some lists out there that try to utilize flick knives a little more, but maybe flicking a little mm -hmm. more aggressively, right? Like you run multiple daggers, you run concealed blade, um, and then you can actually use flick knives in a sort of more offensive way. Uh, but this isn't yeah. one of those lists, right? So they used to, they used to be more on mm -hmm. like three nerf scalpels and using concealed blades. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I ended up taking them out because I didn't really want to use the sideboard space mm -hmm. or daggers. Yeah. I mean, you could just have a more size well, a sideboard for like pinpointing certain matchups and mm -hmm. certain errors. That's that's kind of the issue, I assume. Like because. Mm -hmm flick knives with like concealed blade and a bunch of nerf scalpels isn't really a very good all-round type of strategy right because it, it really only helps against decks that run a medium amount of four block defense reactions but they generally don't want to block a lot and that that's a very narrow kind of kind of um list right where where that's actually true because like if you're up against an old him or something uh flicking a nerf scalpel won't actually let you connect in most cases right because he has so many tools yeah. he can just be like okay uh i can now put an earth react on top of that right um i can put like i can activate crown um i mean we'll get to to old him in a bit um you're not generally running flick knives in the first Model. place versus old him but um yeah, so I, I get it. Uh, you know, when that card was first spoiled with Concealed Blade and everything, it was like, okay, that's that looks pretty cool. That's a really neat and, like, a really cool strategy, right? I can throw some daggers at you, get some on-it effects, make it harder to block, and then I can just get the dagger back and do it all over again. But the amount of sideboard space it uses up is quite significant. Um, yeah, so I would, I would like issue. to see other re-equip cards mm -hmm. in the future to make yep, them a bit, yep. bit more viable um but right now flick knives is just used as um it just shortens their life it just makes their life uh two hp less mm -hmm. yeah. and um occasionally you can flick a knife scalpel on a very relevant hit on mm -hmm. it and it just does a lot of work yeah um, yeah like I've, I've had situations where it was like okay flicking a nerf scalpel in that crucial situation translated into i think like five extra damage that i was able to push because they did yeah. like a equipment block and then de-react on a death touch right and then like the the flick knives uh did one damage obviously right allowed the death touch to connect with one damage so like that's two points of value um and then i got the on hit from the death touch which was another two points of value so it's like a four extra damage in that situation but it can be even more like if you manage to uh let like a, a cnc or leave no witnesses connect right and you get like a card out of them uh it allow you to use boots and then yeah. do another attack and punish yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah. like it, it can yeah. be it can be pretty significant if you manage to do it in the right situation but i think people are also sort of like wising up to it right like mm -hmm. If they see you run like flick knives on a nerf scalpel, they're gonna be wary of doing exact blocks that involve the yeah. reacts just because they know it's there. And that by itself is already pretty good, right? Because yeah. it limits it limits the, the their play lines essentially. It limits what they can do and how efficient they can be with their blocks. And just by existing, that's already a good thing. It's kind of like a, a little bit like Mask of Momentum in Ninja, right? Where you don't I, really I think expect I would it to it connect. To, uh breaking scales. Right, yeah, yeah, okay, that's it's that's always that threat in Katsu. Yep, yeah. Where it's yep. like if you under block if you block exact, they like, can do it at They any break point. it and if they really want the on hit to connect, it can be like two card draws or something in that situation. <laughs> so you have to play around it. Yeah, that's actually a good point. It's a it's a better comparison than mask of momentum. Um right. it's pretty and then like I mean at the floor, flick knives is just like iron rod. And you used to run Iron Rod in Arachne quite frequently yep. in the arm slot. So, you know, it's just a, a direct upgrade to that. Um, Definitely, yeah. So pretty good card, I would say, generally. All right. Um, why don't we go over some of the equipment sideboard choices here? Like, we got the daggers in the sideboard. Um, I assume yep. you don't mainboard any of them, so to speak, because they're obviously matchup dependent. But I would assume 
like the the standard loadout would be like spider spite and nerf scalpel i guess yeah generally it is not spider spider spite and nerf scalpel um occasionally chuck in uh scale peeler there's mm -hmm. a few matchups where it's scale peeler and nerve mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like, uh, i would assume maybe warrior maybe so I do because warrior spider spite doesn't do anything and then into draw my like they have so many non-attacks right that spider spite is kind of iffy to actually connect um, scale makes um temper on mm -hmm. flame scale a bit awkward sometimes true 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 versus on hits and they've got lots of d-reacts for nerf scalpel they got a bunch of d-reacts yeah. and i mean nerf scalpel or flicking generally right isn't just good versus d-reacts it also works against ward effects like for example um uh, the sand cover right that draw mice run um, mm -hmm. because the nerf scalpel deals a point of damage and then the ward effect is gone so you can use it against that uh, you can use it against um, feign death in rangers which mm -hmm. i yeah. don't really see people run but in theory it's there it works against that as well um, and then of course the new prism that's coming out soon will have a bunch of of ward effects probably uh, so you can use um, your flick there to take care of maybe some of those uh, in the situation. Like, I don't expect it to come up a ton, but it'll be relevant every now and then. So just keep it in the back of your head. Um, then we got like your Null Rune. You got the Arcane Lantern, Null Rune yep. Gloves. Um, and I've, I've kind of seen, I've kind of seen people split there. Like you need AB1, um, obviously mm -hmm, just for like Viscerai. Uh, it's, it's really relevant there. Um, yeah, but I've seen I've fast. seen people kind of split over whether to run AB1 or AB2 versus the Wizards because you would run so few blues, right? Like your list is on seven blues in the main board and then you have like three additional ones in the sideboard and a couple mm -hmm. of yellows. But you usually don't exactly have the resources to pitch to Arcane Barrier a ton. So what's your take on that? Like... So I'm actually split on both the wizards. So for Icelander, I'm only running one AB, mm -hmm. and in Kano, I'm running two AB. Okay, right. Um, Kano, we got a lot of yellows. You got like, uh, what is it? Almost like fifteen yellows. Right. Got yeah. Ten blues. So you got like tw you got about twenty odd cards of blues and yellows, which can be pitched quite efficiently to mm -hmm. two AB. Mm -hmm. You will die quite easily off one AB if you're not putting enough pressure on them. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, pressure and... can be hard for this for Uzuri generally mm -hmm. to find like even in the red line yep. list it's not the most consistent right to have hands where you can actually be like okay I can really pressure a lot of life out of you this turn like it happens mm -hmm. sometimes you can have some turns that line up well and you can do a lot of damage uh, but it's not super consistent so it, it makes sense to go AB2 just to be like okay on the turns where I can't pressure I can at least prevent some damage and, and keep my yeah. health totals up. Uh, well, normal like turn patterns are quite often block a couple cards at least mm -hmm. and then send attack. So against Wizard, we can't really do that. So yeah. having A, B options to do that instead makes it quite nice and to be card yeah. efficient as well while saving life. Just kind of survive to the point where you can have like a find an oasis, set that up in Arsenal and just kind of hope you survive their combo turn. Yeah. I mean, Kano's rough right like it's it's not a good matchup for us generally but you know i haven't been doing sense. too bad but contract uh contracts help uh mm -hmm. you can banish key pieces quite easily yeah 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 i recently had a game where it's uh <laughs> i turned turn one hit a car hit annihilate the armed mm -hmm. triggered mask and i hit a blazing in a wildfire and i was like oof yeah that, okay. that's almost gg there that's lucky yep, yep. yeah <laughs> Like, that make, that you, makes sense. you can get lucky in that matchup and you, you can mm -hmm. just limit their power a lot. Yeah, that's that's true. That's actually, I think, one advantage that the contract list has over, like, Redline. Um, sure, it's swingy, right? Like, you can't predict if you're going to hit their power pieces. But if no. you do, it makes the matchup a whole lot easier. So uh, that's that's definitely nice. Um, and then finally, we got Vembrace down here. And I assume this is exclusively for Oldham at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'm sure for Prism that might be relevant with the ward mechanic. Absolutely, yeah. I, I can definitely see this be very relevant into Prism depending on how exactly um, she's going to function. But off of what we've seen so far, I would assume there's probably Spectral Shields um, and then all of the Angel allies that have ward. Um, 
all of the two of them that we've seen so far. Yes. Um, but I would assume that Ward is a big thing for the new Prism. And so this is going to be pretty relevant in trying to push some damage through, even if they have a bunch of like prevention effects up. So I think Vembrace generally is still like a little bit underrated. I think this is a card that's going to be pretty good and pretty valuable down the line, maybe in a couple mm -hmm. of years. Um, it's stable. Depending on on what direction they take with the game. All right, so that uh, cleans up the equipment. And again, like all of this is done for you. If you want to give the deck a try, right? You can just jump into a match, click the sideboard guides, uh, and it automatically loads up the correct sideboards on Talisha. So you don't have to worry about doing all of this yourself. Um, Ollie's done a great job of writing all of that up for you. All right, um, so let's get into the main core of the deck, as it were, like these 42 cards that we're yeah. seeing here. So what's what's the general idea there? So you got your main, so you got like your main of part, bulk of the deck is the contracts. Right. You've wow. got your nine, 19 contracts there. Mm -hmm. um, wanted around, what, a 30 a deck contracts I found. Mm -hmm. um, it lets you banish consistent amounts of, uh, of cards out of deck against mm -hmm. the cards the decks that matter. Mm -hmm. We well, have to want to do that, mm -hmm. and you've gone for I've gone for the best ones, obviously. Um, yeah. The annihilate the armed it hits majority of decks. Mm -hmm. uh, Leave no witnesses always does is always great. Yeah, leave no witness is great. One of the best contracts, definitely. And uh, you've got Plunder the Poor, which mm -hmm. hits every aggro deck right now, mm -hmm. and really good against the Mirror. I mean, you can get lucky. You can even hit like an ultim with it, right? Like if you, oh, yeah. if they let it connect, there's a bunch of like zero and one costs that they have in the deck, right? Like you've got you can the hit winters, a D -react. winter spites. You can hit the D reacts that they have. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they run Oasis, right? Uh, there's yeah. a bunch of cards. Um, maybe they run some of the life gain cards if it's like a hardcore old him like that really wants to go to fatigue there, there's a bunch of hits there obviously not as many as you would see in like a lexi deck um, or a ninja deck where basically every single card is hit by this but um, it can happen right it's just and i agree plunder is the the best of the like non-majestic zero for yeah. four contracts it's uh it's, it's the card that generates me the most silver generally mm -hmm. it's always the good it's always the best card to start with your first uh contract on a double contract turn right yeah makes sense because it, you're guaranteed to get if the both of those hit you're getting a lot of silver mm -hmm. against rangers and ninjas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you silver recursion after that it just yeah it's it just uh loops makes sense right and then um like okay right like eradicate makes sense surgical extraction makes mm -hmm. sense they're just like generally the the good ones right like those are just yeah. the majestics can't really go wrong with them eradicate is kind of like not that great on its own but if you can set up a double contract turn or you can pump it or maybe you I get lucky mean, and you can do both. It can be super harsh. It's super good. It's a, it's a must block in certain decks. I yeah. think it's a must block again. Yeah, when you feel Lexi, uh huh. You can't you can't let eradicate it because four cards out of your deck is four cards yeah. is too much. Yeah, it's yeah. too much. Yeah. So it just demands at least one card. Um, and if you hit a cut to the chase with it, it's great. Like I remember back when I played Arachne, right? Like basically, if my opponent let eradicate hit, I think that was. In most cases, that was GG because it meant I could eventually run them out of cards just because those four extra banishes hurt so much in the long run. Uh, and then if you get like one or two really power cards in there as well, right? Like it just oh, yeah. increases the threat density, lowers the deck size, accelerates your win con. It's just a good card. It's sometimes overlooked for the other two because they both have like more immediate impact. Um, but Eradicate is, yeah. a, is a pretty good card. <clears throat> Um, and then we got Slay the Scholars as the last one. And that's that's actually kind of interesting because I remember, um, I think I talked to you actually about this back in the Arachne days, like which one of the zero for fours after Plunder the Poor was the best, right? Because you got like yeah. Feast the Frail, Slay the Scholars, uh, Sack the Shifty, I think is the, the third mm -hmm. one. Um, and then... Um, I, used one, on right? I used to be on Sack the Shifty mm -hmm. for a bit. Because it hit majority of non attacks anyway with go yep. again. With go again. Um, but I really suffered 
from the lack of silver generation into Icelander and Wizard and Kano. Uh huh. Okay. So Slain Scholars is that extra silver generation to for me to buy boots quite often into Icelander. Basically. Okay. So the idea is just to be able to pressure wizards better with it, mm -hmm. basically to just string together longer turns and just go that way. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because um, under the four, leave no witnesses and annihilate the armed. They are harder in that matchup to get silver you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to do... Like, Plunder might hit some yeah. things, right? But Annihilate versus Icelander, maybe, if they're on the Sometimes, Bullender plan, yes. you're going to hit it's... something every now and then. The odds aren't in your favor for them, yeah, at least. Yeah. And Sorry. leave no witnesses, like... I mean, against Icelander, they're not going to let that hit when they have something in Arsenal, like, almost never. I think the only situation where that happens... Before, anyway is maybe on a codex turn, right? When you force mm -hmm. them to put an attack in their uh, arsenal and like all of their attacks are red. Um, so you know there's a red in arsenal that they can't get out. Um, and then you make it so the leave no witnesses hits, right? If you can if you can set that up, I think, then you have a chance of actually getting some silver, but you're never gonna run into an Icelander that has like a red in arsenal by the time the leave no witnesses connects i think almost never yeah, yeah it's a it's a it's a weird one mm -hmm. so that right. up. okay so that makes sense like you just took the best contracts basically ran with um um makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. um so then we get to and then of course you've got uh three cut to the chase right just as like yeah it buffs just... contracts not set blocks Box three contracts. forces a contract through uh if you can get, get it on an eradicate with the in the deck you know you're quite for, quite forced to block with them quite often mm -hmm. um it's a bit like shred sometimes mm -hmm. you don't all, mm -hmm. well a bit more awkward so we don't draw a contract card and you're getting your isolates and your mm -hmm. other cards so it's but it is it's there just to make your punish turns just feel so much better when you can block get over yeah. six block or, get or over whatever it. Yeah, yeah 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 just like uh play isolate swap in a surgical and then pump that with a cut to the chase i assume that's that's gotta feel pretty good you know mm -hmm. and um, uh if you uh you can be opt on the card is quite relevant as mm -hmm. well just helps helps with that silver generation always yep. nice yep yep that's true like it's it's i think the the reverse opt um or fate seal yeah. as it's often called that arachne does is a little underrated like it's not a super powerful ability but it does have um uh, it adds a little bit of like consistency to the deck you know mm -hmm. both in Definitely, terms of yeah. silver generation and like knowing if they have threats or not you know that kind of yeah, stuff like any any yeah. information you have over your opponent's hand is always good right or de their deck it's always good to have and cut to the chase brings a little bit of that fate seal effect into Uzuri, so you can use some of that. Um, and I mean, hey, at the floor, it's a three block, you know. Like, oh yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, um, so we got the the contract part of the deck set up. Um, why don't we go over yeah. the other half of this core, basically? Yeah, so I think it goes to stealth. Yeah, you're on mm -hmm. six isolates. Yep. So you're only stealth cards, but they're the best stealth cards. Mm -hmm. Isolate is just incredible. Yeah, like just dominate. It's great. Um, I didn't find I said I needed more than six. Okay. The reds are reds feel a bit worse mm -hmm. because just pitching them and you can't you got no ways of buffing them. Mm -hmm. So they're not an end con win con where you can react it twice with like a razor's edge or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they lose a lot of bit of their value. So you Makes can pitch sense. these the blue and yellow quite well. So they're not. If you can't use them, you can always stagger them mm -hmm. away. And yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The... And then you go with your swaps. Mm -hmm. And I think they're your standard swaps. Yeah, your... pretty much. I think you've Combined got like... Combined uh, shake down in a death touch. Yeah, those are like... I would say those are probably like the, the standard three. Mm -hmm. um, or in, in your case, like you only run two copies of Death Touch, but yeah. Yeah, those are like your standard ones, I, I guess. Would love, I would love to run more Death Touch, mm -hmm. but the two block really costs. Two block hurts. Like, I get it. In the deck. And you don't have enough stealth to consistently get mm -hmm. them out 
if they're in hand. That's kind so, of the issue. Like, yeah. I'm I'm running five currently in my my mm -hmm. stealth based list just because Death Touch is such a good card. Like, it's mm -hmm. I think one of the best cards from the set, probably second best after Codex of Frailty, in my opinion. Yeah, um, it, it's generally your big swing turns. It yeah. always involved something in Death Touch. Mm -hmm. the, either Codex Death Touch or just have it in Arsenal, set it up, or like swap it in with an Isolate. You know, like it's a, it's a really good card. And it's also like the, the best thing about Death Touch is it's like almost the only on hit that's always going to be relevant right like i mean mm -hmm. shakedown i guess because shakedown is just you know it strips a card from the hand yeah and, uh you can whiff right like but i find yeah. that um most of the times if you whiff on shakedown that means their turn would have been pretty bad anyways right yeah um, well you've chosen the wrong color but oh you've chosen the wrong color right like but that, that's that's like just it comes with game knowledge generally mm -hmm. so but while we're on the topic actually it's a good point like what would you say is like uh, if you manage to get a shakedown to hit like what's your what's your default um what do you pick uh, obviously red. based based on matchup but like generally i would I assume go -to. red red is like kind of the go-to yeah. right like i think the only obviously situation like Bravo, where I, Alden, yeah. and blue is the right call Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's some niche scenarios like Icelander maybe you, I guess you would also yeah, call blue or if you know what's in that hand and mm -hmm. like you can call if you like end game and you can you can know exactly what's in their hand or something so you right. can strip their last few cards out of hand you can you can target like their biggest threat if you know it's there that makes sense yeah like I think the only situation where I would probably call yellow is if I manage to get a shakedown to connect on turn zero, like if I'm going first and I manage to have like an isolate and a shakedown in my hand and I know it's going to hit. Um, and I know I'm up against a deck that has like yellow power cards, right? Like Ranger, mm -hmm. for example, where I know I can hit like a rain raises with yeah. it. I can hit Dory. a codex of frailty with it. Um, that kind of stuff. Thing. Bolton, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Big one there. Um, so that's because like the, the card that you banish doesn't matter that much in that situation, right? Because they get it back anyways. So you're mm -hmm. really looking to strip a card that has an impact down the line from their hand. Yep. And that's that's probably the situation where I would call yellow. Um, if I know I'm up against a deck that has like powerful yellows, you know, like Art of War too, for example, mm -hmm. is a good I can see that, yeah. Um, but in most cases, I guess, yeah, against aggressive decks, just call red. And if they don't have a red, their turn's gonna be bad anyways, right? So you, it's like, okay, it's fair. You miss, you also you get miss the out information the of their of their hand, uh -huh. so you can plan exactly what you're blocking and how yep. you're blocking next turn. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. It's so we got, got we got this, those, yeah. and then yeah, like CNC is just you know it's CNC standard. Card. Yeah. Um, can't really go wrong with it. Um, there's a couple yeah. others you could put in there. Like I've seen some decks running stuff like cut down to size. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got erase phase, you got humble, even amnesia in theory. Um, if yeah, you want to run nourishing, that. Uh, nourishing emptiness is, is yeah. an option that you can run. And all of those have their applications, but I feel like the, the main issue with them is all they of them have do. like narrow conditions in which they apply some more than others. Pop. The blocking two is and, just the yeah yeah the most of them the, only, only block two and that's kind of like the nail in the coffin there for yeah. it like pretty sure yeah, if, if C and C only block two it wouldn't be run nearly as much as it is currently but maybe it's, it's still, still a strong card. it's still a good card it's still a good card but the fact that it blocks three is just like there's zero downside to running it you know like mm -hmm. um and then we have obviously some like you've got E strike. Yeah, the other flexible two cards, card. Fair strike, enough. Free card. It does. Like, it does everything you want it to do. Yep. It gives you go again. Yep. It uh, sets up Arsenal if you want to. Yep. Or it just comes in for seven. When it's you a need two card to. seven. Sometimes that's all you need, really. Like you already blocks, have an Arsenal. Blocks it blocks three. E Strike is just it does everything. E, e you Strike want it to do. is never like a card that's gonna be super good. Um, as in like, oh my god, this card is, is turning around the match now. Um, but it's also never a card that's bad, right? Like there's there's no hand where you are sad to see an E-Strike because like either you block with it 
um because you can't convert it or you're like okay i'm gonna use this to to throw some damage to extend my turn it's flexible that's that's what mm -hmm. it does um and then the big bad one codex of frailty mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, it's pretty self-explanatory it's just it's great time. Uh, codex of frailty like if if you think like i don't know if, if you want to know why codex of frailty is good i'd encourage you to to watch like basically almost any match of the pro tour baltimore because almost all of them feature decks that run codex of frailty in some capacity or other mm -hmm. it's just a good card like you can do so many things with codex i actually think personally assassin gets more use out of codex of frailty than any other class simply because the cards we can bring back with it are generally more impactful um I think we can use it card efficiently very yeah. well yeah 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 for, for our, our output and the on hits yep. and everything yep. like it's a great card as an extender for ranger for example mm -hmm. right where you can just go like okay uh lexi specifically I just had a turn that was like two arrows and I have like a go again left after that, but I can't load anymore because I already used Voltaire twice. Great. Now I have a codex. I can use that, have another arrow in Arsenal and I can keep, you know, going with my turn. But that arrow in most cases is going to be like a zero for four, one for five with maybe like some kind of on hit or something. Um, and we can bring back stuff like Leave No Witnesses, Death Touch, Command and Conquer, you know, if we set it up yeah. the right way um they're definitely your three go-to's as well mm -hmm. this and that's just occasionally you might go eradicate if you're yeah go in i'm gonna stake four cards out of your deck if you do nothing yeah yeah but that makes sense it just demands yeah. it demands interaction and especially yeah. the the ability to just go like okay i have a one card hand and that hand is like codex leave no witnesses so i can put i can force something into your arsenal and then I can blow up that arsenal unless you block. Mm -hmm. um, that is just massive, especially in the late game when they have no more equipment to do anything about it. You know, you can just go like, okay, what are you going to do? You're going to give me two cards to protect that arsenal? Because if it's a D-React that they have, you know, you still have flick knives. You can just yep. scalpel that and it still hits. And then they, it's they, also it's just good. really good at doing, uh, it's going wide, like Lexi can use it. Mm -hmm. and it if you can do it, attack a leave no witnesses cut to the chase mm -hmm. boots codex into another leave no witnesses mm -hmm. while taking two arsenal slots off them yeah 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 that yeah, feels that's, brutal that's brutal yeah that is rough and i've I've actually i've seen uh a lot of decks run um nimblism mm -hmm. specifically to facilitate this kind of stuff where you can go like nimblism codex leave no witnesses and just have it hit for seven. Oh yeah um, also great and I, that's a, I've, I've played i'm playing that personally myself and it's super good when it when it comes up i assume you're not running nimblism simply because it's a two block um, yeah and you just want to minimize the two blocks so that makes sense yes, yeah. pretty much yeah mm -hmm. no, i get it two blocks are rough all right so that's like the core of the deck um now let's go over some of these sideboard choices i would say those fit in like broadly speaking probably like two main um functions right like you've got your defensive slots up here yeah you got i would say you got like three different uh different packages i guess mm -hmm. oh, you got your defense cards your attack reactions yeah. and then you just got your others mm -hmm. makes sense yeah your attack so there's um, like there's a ton of defense cards here i can mm -hmm. see like you run three fate for scenes three sink belows through your aces respite um, and then yeah. two each of Frailty Trap and Inertia Trap. Um, and those are just good. Like, Inertia yeah. Trap hurts um, Ultim if they're on Titan's Fist. Uh, really mm -hmm. good card against Ultim. Uh, Inertia Dory. Trap, Dory. Yeah, against Rangers in general. Rangers, specifically Azalea. Yeah. And Azalea is so much weaker if she doesn't have an arsenal, right? Because she can't use the opt. So she can't dominate, so you can block her normally. Um, if, if great. Lexi uses a plus great one stuff. on Voltaire. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it hard for them to set up six card hands sometimes. Yep, yep, it's absolutely. Great. And Frailty Trap, I assume, is mostly for Lexi. Uh, I, yeah. I guess it, it also works against like Dorinthia, for example. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty good there. 
there's a few there's a few uh few applications examples where you can use it um mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's just a three d react three yeah. d react still if it needs to be and against so alexi it can be crippling like a frailty token versus oh, yeah. alexi can be like four damage saved so you have like one card that effectively blocks seven which is insane mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you can actually stop their entire turn, right? Like if they just go, okay, load Bolton shot, give it plus one from Voltaire, and then you have a frailty trap. Like mm-hmm. they either commit, like if they have, you know, rain raises, okay, sure. Um, or they, they commit their, their snapdragons and they still have a turn. But yeah, if you can like, advantage. if you can advantage force, be, yeah. if you can force the, the snapdragons that way, that's awesome. So great mm-hmm. card. If you're worried about Lexi, and I think a lot of us are currently, <laughs> um, after that, after that pro to a frailty trap is definitely the tech card to consider if you're on. They're even, assassin. they're even thrown in for the mirror these days. Mm-hmm. True. It's a great card. It's good. It's just generally good. And then Ace is obviously like for the Wizards mostly, but also you have Tunic, so you can run it in other mm-hmm. matchups too, yeah. where you expect like relevant on hits. It gets around Dominate. Um, it's really a great good card. against Dominate, yeah. Uh, that's um, a good card. And the life, one life can save you, mm-hmm. can win your games like every, each yep. time. Absolutely, yeah. It, it happens, yeah. I'd um, also uh, describe Down and Dirty as a defensive card. Yeah, I guess that makes the most sense because it is like you're not looking. Yeah, you're not looking to play this. Um, It's awful to play it. So this is Mm. for I assume Dromai and then Rangers and maybe the Mirror. I guess. Yeah, this is for Codex decks Mm -hmm. and Dromai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Being able to block from Arsenal against Dromai, I can just pop it in Arsenal and just be like, okay, I can I can play my hands normally, right? I don't have to hold a popper. I can just mm-hmm. have this in Arsenal, and then if they send an attack at me where I'm like, I need a popper now, I know I have it, and I, I don't need to rely on my deck giving me one, because you don't run that many, right? Like, you run eight poppers otherwise. Yeah. But shakedown, Command and Conquer, yeah. two copies of Death Touch, that's it. Mm-hmm. So having this in Arsenal and having it sit there for a couple turns, maybe well, you can feel pretty good. You've also got the ability to set up with Codex of Frailty. Mm-hmm. So you can go, you go, okay, I want to be able to, you've got control of the board Mm -hmm. and you've got a little bit of time to just go, okay, I can grab a popper. I have a free hand next turn. Mm -hmm. True. I can do whatever I want. Like, I mean, it loses a little bit of value there because then you don't, you really utilize the ponder token. You do waste the ponder. Um, And the frailty is also kind of useless against Dromai. But if you're like, okay, I just need to survive this. I need to have a popper so I can deal with your board state. You know, sometimes that's what you got to do. No no way around it. Put the pressure on as well. Yeah. I mean, Dromai is a rough matchup for us. It's, you know, anything you can do to make that a little bit better. Um, 100%. it's it's, It's pretty good. Then we've got uh, the attack reactions. Maybe we, we get, go over those next. So you've got like your shreds and then two copies of Spreading Plague. Yeah, you got shreds. They're just great. Um, not on reds because mm-hmm. I find them a bit clunkier. Yeah, they um, can be. Like it's hard to get full value out of them and they don't pitch. So they're kind of... Eh. Pitching is a bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't really want to be pitching reds often. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and blues and yellows, blues, a little bit weaker. Yellows are just fantastic, mm-hmm. but they both pitch very well. And you can have late game plays with them to yep. get someone on a dagger. Yep. Or, yeah. Great guy. That's, that's a great thing, right? Like, it works against every assassin attack. Mm-hmm. So, even a dagger, yeah. if they're at one uh, and you send an assassin attack mm-hmm. and you have a shred and they don't respect it. Um, or they, they block it with like a card, you can go, okay, I'm going to shred this, or they're at two, uh, you do the same and then you flick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a lot of, like, Assassin can be pretty scary if you're at low life. Uh, there's a lot of oh, tools yeah. you have. Uh, speaking, of uh, speaking of tools you have when the opponent is at low life, like Spreading Plague. Um, One of my favorite cards from the new set. I love it. I love um, I love the concept of it. I've personally, in the games where I ran it, never been able to get it to pop. Um, but I think I've probably played it wrong um, or just played around it uh, wrong. So and it, it's probably also better in contract than it is in red line simply because your, yeah. your entire 
game plan, right, is to to have a long game, drawn out yeah. game that's a little more grindy, maybe, and it's not the looking to pitch stack exactly. It. You what can you pitch, want to see it you with? You can pitch stack it, and then just be like, okay, you know, I've got you down to like two or three, um, and I, everything I do is basically lethal. So I I do like an isolate or something, um, and now you commit. Maybe you have some equipment left. Uh, you commit that and then maybe you have a D-react or something and yeah. then I spreading plague for like three blood rot boxes and you're just dead because you don't have a turn. Yeah, I've been able to do it. You can set up in the mirror. It's devastating because you can set up double spreading plague tons. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it, rough. it can be like 12 life at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's brutal. Like yeah, There's yeah. no coming back from that. Yeah, no, that's that's nasty. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes I guess it just lines up naturally. Like you're up against someone, they block a lot, you know? Oh, yeah. And then you have it, and it's just like, hey, here's uh, three blood rot pox. Like, here's six extra yeah. damage for it's, you. Just it's take it. just a free block. Mm -hmm. And in, if, in some matchups, so if you can get use out of it, mm -hmm. great. It's a yellow it's three block. Nice. Right? Like, that's yeah. not the worst, you know, floor definitely to have not. for a card, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Right, um, then we've got the Hurls, um, which I guess yeah. are mostly for Dromai, just to be able to go a little bit wider, like take some pressure off, uh, threaten the board a little more. It's generally for any matchup that I know it, I have to kill them. Uh huh. The game isn't winning by fatigue. The game isn't, I, I, I can't pressure them fully with disruption. Okay, yeah. This is just fully, I have to make sure this person dies before I fatigue mm -hmm. or they set up whatever they're trying to do. Okay, right. So this will be for Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. you, you can deal with boards. You can just set more pressure on them. Mm -hmm. Dash, more pressure on hands. Right, like, yeah. You Dash need to strip their hands away and take advantage of when they have item hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Against Bravo, because Bravo, it's a very mid range swinging back and forth matchup. Mm hmm. Makes sense. Uh, same with same with the mirror. I find that's always going to generally fatigue. Yeah, you need cards uh, where you can go a little wider there. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's fine when you put it in full stack. It's a great mm -hmm. card. And uh, occasionally you can do some combat tricks where you can get them lethal a little bit faster. Yeah. With the one resource and you can kill them off two quite just, well with flick Just knives. get them to like two or three or something and just be like, mm -hmm. okay, hurl, flick something. Then flick another dagger, you know, and now the the hurl is has to be blocked because it comes in for three, but they're only blocking for two with all of their cards, so they have to put two cards in front of it. Um, I, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It's a good card. Like, mm -hmm. um, you're still like, I mean, I know this is like not a red line deck, but this is still really red heavy. Like, if you look at the yeah. the numbers here, right? So I guess there's there could be an argument to swap this like for Ravenous Rebel, right? Um, yeah. Just to have that. I mean, it's mostly going to come in for four in about two thirds of the cases, maybe, right? Um, yeah. And then maybe it comes in for three and then it's still the same as a hurl, basically. Um, the problem I find is if you do hit a blue. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, it feels it's real bad. Um, it's like I also don't like the idea of giving my opponent info about my deck, specifically. Sure in a deck that tries to be a little more sneaky, like Azuri, right? Where you mm -hmm. try to mind game them and like hide information from them as much as possible. So the fact that um, Rabble shows them what the top card of my deck is, is yeah, also yeah. like, it's not, you know, a massive disadvantage, obviously, but... It can um, be annoying if you're, you're revealing that uh, shakedown. And exactly. Next right. turn you go isolate, they know exactly what's coming. They know what's coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the other cards yeah like it's it's um i guess it has up and down sides but i yeah. i agree with with running hurl over I think, rabble i think i've got too many blues and yellows to make mm -hmm. yep rabble worth it over yeah, yeah yeah in this specific configuration of the deck with that plan in mind i think hurl is better than rabble definitely yeah i agree with that uh and then we got finally like a single copy of remembrance you know, like it's yeah. a it's a deck that goes to fatigue quite often. Remembrance is good. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think that's all you can say about it. You can get poppers back. uh, Really big um, end games where you can guarantee every card out of their hand. Mm-hmm. Where you can, if you're going back to back shakedowns, back to back search calls, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just very difficult to come back because normally when you play Remembrance, you've got about five cards left in deck. Mm-hmm. So you you typically pitch it until it's like really late game, and then you mm-hmm. just guarantee that you get your threats back. Makes sense, yeah. Because like I mean, I guess also for the draw my matchup, right? You just it basically means you have three extra poppers mm-hmm. uh, yeah, true, in your yeah. list uh, that yeah. only take up like a single. Um, space of sideboard so that's yeah. pretty good definitely um and then plague hive um which is for very obvious reasons a card that i love you know like the whole channel's named after it so um great card to run unfortunately a yeah. little bit expensive it's a fable um i'm generally not a, a super big fan of playable fables like I prefer, I, no. I was, when I saw like this, the Fable CNC, you know, I was really happy because it was like, okay, hey, this is a great direction they're taking. Make those expensive chase cards, but they're not relevant for the game. You know, they, that doesn't matter. But Plague Hive, again, is a fla- Fable that's very playable um, for, you know, better or worse, depending on your on your stance. It's a great card. Like, so what, what matchups do you typically find yourself running this in? Um, I'm liking it in generally any game that I'm expecting to go long. Mm-hmm. So you see it more than once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good where against heroes where these tokens are very powerful against. Mm-hmm. So Lexi, for example, mm-hmm. if you hit frailty or inertia, it's pretty Massive, good for you. Yeah. And if you hit blood rot, we can't complain it. Yeah, it's still too damage. Free. You know, it's still like. I pitched for a dagger and I got like two extra damage on top. It's good. Yeah, it's it's, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Odin, you're getting like five uses out of it probably per mm-hmm. game. Like, per time, like. If it goes long, four to five wizards, uses. I like it against wizards. Mm-hmm. Being able to, if it hits inertia. Yeah, inertia against wizards big. is massive. Both of them, yeah. Any deck that I want that wants to hold their deck, uh, their arsenal quite a lot. Yeah. So like Bolton, I've run, I've run it against Bolton if they're on combos, Bolton with Sabres. Makes sense. Yeah, right. So you, if they, they put like a Luminous Engine in Arsenal and you can sort of get rid of that with an Inertia token, like either you force them to combo off when they're not quite ready for it yet, mm-hmm. and then the combo is pretty survivable, um, or, or to you put it to the bottom. Mm hmm. Like, Oasis Plague Hive is my favorite because you can just force a token on their turn where mm-hmm. it's relevant. Like if you get a Kenosha when they're trying to Arsenal, yeah, yeah, it feels great. That's pretty massive. Like it's a little random, obviously. You know, mm-hmm. like you sure. you can't guarantee that you'll get the the token that you want. But I agree. Like any matchup where you either want extra pitch anyway, so like Wizards. Or you expect the game to go long, you know, um, or the tokens just have like massive, like against Lexi, I guess it can be a little bit of a liability because of the non-block, but sure. against Lexi, all of the tokens are really relevant. So, you know, it, it makes a lot yeah. of sense to run it there too. Azalea too, you know, same reason, basically if ranges it, in general. If it hits a frailty, yeah. it's essentially a three block. Yeah, yeah, true. Against Lexi, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, That's great. Or like, I mean, even against Ninja, I could see it, right? Because frailty against Ninja, against Katsu, means mm-hmm. like, hey, no Kodachi's next turn. Great. Um, yeah. I'll take it, you know? Um, and with you, you can do the same with frailty trap, right? But frailty trap blocking a Kodachi feels like, yeah, you know? It feels bad value, yeah. It feels it's bad value. Like, it's kind of the same dilemma you had with, like, that all you got, you know? Where it's like, yeah, technically it's a free block, of course, because I draw a card, but you're using a three block to block like a one attack. It's just, yeah, it doesn't feel that great, honestly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like Plague Hive, it's a good card. Um, yeah. Grab it's one a... if you want it before they get even more expensive is is what I would say in that scenario generally. Yeah. Yeah, it's that truth. <laughs> it's it is what it is, you know, like fables. All right. Um, so this is this is the whole deck. Uh and like I said, um if you just go up and you go on like matchups, right? You can see the entire sideboard plan, all of it is laid out for every matchup that you could want basically. Um all of the heroes lined up here. 
um, and you can go over that um, and get an idea of what to run in which matchup. Um, so I wanted to also go a little bit over the uh, the stats of the deck, right? Or rather like the results um, that the deck got. Because this deck's been uh, public for quite a while now. I think um, mm -hmm. you put like the first version of it up like, I don't know, uh, a week or two before Outsiders actually released, right? When the deck was playable on, on Talisha oh, already. Sure, yeah. For the most them. part, like there were a couple of buggy cards that didn't really work as intended, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it was pretty good. And um, so this is this is not, this is like 500 matches. It's crazy. That's a, a huge number, but that's not all yeah. you, right? Like there's a bunch no. of random people online that have been taking this deck and playing around with it and, and giving it a spin. And typically when that happens, like, right, you put a deck up um, on Talisher for everyone to try out. And then the first thing that happens is the win rate just tanks, right? <laughs> um, like before you're like, hey, I'm sitting at like, I don't know, 70, 75%. I've got a pretty good idea. I think this is a great deck. You put it up online and the, the win rate drops to like 40 or something. Um, and here it's still, it's sitting at 64%, um, which I would say is really good for yeah. uh, a public deck, um, for a hero that's not like, I would say, super easy to play. Like it's quite, there's, yeah. it's, it's not, there's, I wouldn't say it's, yeah. You need to know your game plan into every hero quite Exactly, like, yeah, like. Quite well. And if yeah. you don't, it gets a bit tougher. It, it's tough. Like it's it's less about knowing what exactly every card in your deck does but more knowing how to utilize them against every other hero so you need to mm -hmm. really know like your matchups well and and that kind of stuff so uh but yeah 64 percent. and if you look at this this matchup spread right um would you generally say that's about accurate i can see there's like a 50 percent win rate into draw my that's actually kind of surprising um, um yeah. i would assume this is probably a bit lower if you're up against a experienced draw my pilot i th i think it's it's a bit rough yeah it, it, if they know exactly why they're doing it i think mm -hmm. their draw is going to be definitely favored mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you can kill them by pressuring hands enough mm -hmm. um i don't find fatiguing them a viable strategy anymore Mostly, yeah i know um it used to be the case for Arachne, but yeah, we've also just got the gas to actually kill them this time. So mm -hmm. if you can, you can do it. And uh, things like Spreading Plague is huge in that matchup. That's true. Like they like to block, and then when you can Spreading Plague and just you know strip some health, they, and they, they run like I don't know six blues or something, mm -hmm. um, maybe nine blues or so. But they're generally not gonna be able to pay for the Spreading Plague for the Blood Rot Poxes. Um, so it, that's going to cost them a bunch of health, typically, yeah. Mm. And then we got Kano. That's another one that I'm a little bit surprised by, honestly, because I, I would assume, again, if the Kano player knows what they're doing, You'd that be this surprised is a that pretty at rough how, one. How uh, the banishes affect that game. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm underestimating that, honestly. Um, that, that could be pretty true. Because they're very combo oriented, mm -hmm. and if, mm -hmm. if the pieces go, if you get the right pieces, yeah, it's rough. Yeah, and then like you know the matchups into the aggro decks. Uh, I think that that goes about as well as I would expect. Like Briar, um, Dash is Generally, interesting, I guess, because like I think Pistol Dash is is unless... the correct way to Zuri. Yeah, it's uh, and it's a bit rough. Yeah. Like, unless you get really lucky with the banishes and hit a couple of their items, I think there's not that much you can do against, like, a, a fully committed pistol dash, right. you know? Yeah, you can't fatigue them. They've got mm. two good items set up. Yep. And um, you, sh you can kill them. Spreading mm. Plague again, another MVP in that, yeah, in, true. In that matchup. True, true, yeah, true. I like really blocking good. a lot. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it can be tough sometimes. It's definitely a matchup you want to have a game plan into. Mm -hmm. um, I think the big, big ones that are probably the tougher matchups to get a grasp on, like Dash, mm -hmm. Bravo, uh, Dromai, Icelander, yeah, and uh, the Odin matchup as well. Yeah, Odin's like, yeah, it's interesting because I think out of all of these, Bravo is actually the only one that has like a negative win rate, right? Um, 
17 to 20 everything else you're at least 50 50 into again mm -hmm. like obviously this is Talisher data right so it's not gonna be super representative of like a real tournament competitive environment but also this is over 500 matches right so you know at some point just you know statistics um do matter right if you get to a large enough sample size yeah. you can say that this is this is fairly representative of what's gonna happen um even at like a a maybe not like the absolute pro levels but if you take this deck to like a, a local competitive event right um like your i don't know road to nationals uh pro quest skirmish that kind of stuff um and you know your matchups and you know how the deck operates i think you can do surprisingly well and i think a lot of people kind of underestimate azuri currently i think um, generates quite a good matchup spread if you know the matchups well mm -hmm. um i think uh i'm pretty much uh over 50 percent in all the matchups except icelander icelander yeah. can be a bit tricky sometimes especially very good iceland plays yeah 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 and, like, uh, i mean the I that have been going around with in case yeah uh, it's really tough on in case uh, it's rough uh, against against the yeah. Theory, yeah like i i remember like you know uh ben dodd uh, the guy who came up with the red line list um famously describes the icelander matchup as like 40 40 matchup um, simply because it depends a lot on who gets their disruption out first basically right because icelander <laughs> really doesn't deal well with disruption um and if you can consistently like keep her off arsenal um get rid of some of her key threats uh she can have a very rough time but the same works the other way around like if she can line up her disruption and do stuff like channel like frigid you know which just completely stops your turn because you don't really want to pitch in most situations um or she can do stuff like make you discard with an ether ice vein or like you know use in case or something like that um then she can get like a, a leg over you and just you know you, you can't recover from that so it's a it's a pretty polarizing matchup i think mm -hmm. it can really swing either way kind of depending on how the cards line up um but it's definitely not like an auto loss or anything no definitely um, not i think this like if anything if this deck has an auto loss, I would say the closest is probably Pistol Dash or a really competent Draw My Player. I think those are probably the two worst matchups I would say that this deck has. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, Draw My is probably the worst. Mm -hmm. Like if they know yeah. what they're doing, you know. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. It's, it's I rough. think if you're seeing more aggro builds, it's a little bit easier, but like the mm -hmm. control dragon draw my yeah big big dragon like Very what tough. what uh yuha piloted at the the pro tour i think that's a real nightmare like a red line list like what mara ferris did i think that's probably yeah. a little bit easier unless yeah, it's it's literally play played by mara ferris in that case i think you don't really have a lot of a chance but if it's some other person on her build i think it can work um and that's probably a little bit easier for you to handle than a big dragon control list is but Definitely. generally, it's an uphill battle. Like that matchup is not super fun to play, in my experience. All right. Um, so we've gone over the results a little bit, over the matchups. Anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think that's it. I think uh, I've, I've made work. a few changes recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's uh, I've added the the trap, the uh, new frailty. frailty trap. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, I think the that's a, that's really like a result of the Pro Tour showing us just how damaging and how aggressive Lexi can really be with the new cards that she has access to now. It's crazy. Like Lexi has so many power cards now and such consistent turns because the deck just is basically all arrows and power cards. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to really get these famous ranger brick hands you know with lexi nowadays mm. it can still yeah. happen but it's really rare and, and the field's going to be mostly lexi you yeah. kind of want to target them a bit more so yeah, definitely want to target them frailty trap feels too. like a very good very, very good big inclusion. target as well mm -hmm. <laughs> on that super good um love the card it's definitely good yeah but yeah you can see like here in this line it's definitely been added recently right yes uh, you've, you've <laughs> seen 15 of them as a compared to like what 
a thousand three hundred and eighteen leave no witnesses. <laughs> yes, I do want to talk about that. The uh, leave no witnesses gets almost almost double most of the cards here, mm-hmm. and that is just to show you how powerful Codex of Frailty really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I assume it's probably one of the most frequent. Uh, targets to bring back really just because mm-hmm. this line of codex of frailty force you to arsenal and then immediately put an arsenal threat down that i can play for free is just super good value um and mm-hmm. it, it puts the opponent in a really tough spot where they have to decide okay uh do i want to protect this arsenal um by giving cards and then i have like a two card hand and an arsenal maybe or even just one card hand because i had to discard um, or do I just let them blow up the arsenal and get, generate even more value, right? Like generate silver and everything. So it's rough. Um, that's a good combo. And that's that's one of the main ones, I think, um, that you want to watch out for. Like if you're playing against Azuri, uh, keep track of the graveyard a little bit of what's in there, right? Like check if they have like a leave no witnesses. Do they have a death touch? Do they have a CNC? And sometimes you actually want to block with these cards early, I found, yeah. right? Like you're just, okay, uh, I have a death touch in hand and I value that death touch in arsenal more than I value, uh, in, in graveyard actually, more than I would value it like in arsenal now. So I'm going to block with it, even though it's just a two block, um, just to have that in arsenal, just to have a, a good uh, target for an early codex yeah. you know if, if it lines up early codex with nothing in grave it's yeah. nothing sadder yeah that's like it happens right like you get a codex in your first like i don't know three turns or so um and then you're like okay i have nothing good to bring back here like you don't want to bring back a plunder of the poor that just feels like yeah if you need to it's if not you the need worst. to it's not the worst right if but they've already got an arsenal it yeah. doesn't really affect them true true um it's just you're getting you, fra- if it's like a lexi matchup i might do it just to mm-hmm. get a frailty and yeah. an extra banish. like and i mean that makes sense like for the for the lexi matchup where the frailty basically means hey this is like three to four extra health now um yeah sure i can see it but in in a lot of it other spots great to do that. early codex doesn't feel that good like you want them to turn up in the mid game ideally where they're already a little bit lower in health maybe they used one or two equipments up already you know and you can be like okay um i can make this connect fairly reliably or they have to give me actual cards to stop it you know that's like the yeah. best situation for a codex in my opinion um so if you see one like turn one you know you can pitch it um, yeah, and then it pitch. comes around late game when it's like close and then it can be really impactful and just, you know, completely blow them out. Um, Codex of Frailty. It's a good card. What can I say? All right. Um, so this is the, the deck tech uh, portion of the video where we go over everything. And, and now you have like a, a fairly decent idea um, of how this operates. Uh, and again, like the link to the, the um, deck is down in the description of the video. Um, and if you want to check out a matchup that Oli recorded um, of how he played this deck versus a fatigue old him list, um, you can check out uh, another video that we did recently. Uh, I'm going to link that too. Um, so you can check that out to get an idea of how to navigate that kind of matchup. And um, I thought it would be a good idea the, to take this list now and then play a game with it. Because as I said, I have actually not played this yet. Um, I've played Redline Azuri quite a bit now, but I have not actually played uh, the contract list. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go into competitive CC um, and we are going to play a game of um, contract Azuri versus maybe a Lexi. I think that that would be pretty neat um, just to see that because Lexi is going to be a very relevant deck um, Mm -hmm. now. That's going to be something that you're going to see a lot of. Um, So let's try. Maybe we'll find a Lexi um, and we can we can have a game against that and just see how that operates. Uh, Maybe we get something different and then we get something different, you know. Let's see what happens. Um, we can go through the uh, Lexi sideboard. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just click that because I like just. I mean, you can't see all of this because my my face is over it a little bit. Sorry for that, but 
there's as you can see all of the sideboards are here and this is all just one click so you just go like okay here's the lexi i click that and then it just loads in automatically the entire thing right um and you just go like spider spy scale peeler um i assume that's because lexis don't generally run d reacts no and if they are off the arc trance they're running um purge grapplers or if late game they late want game. to block with new horizon and tunic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a flick it can be just a bit awkward it just doesn't do the breakpoints they want it to do mm -hmm. okay that makes sense yeah because that that would not have been i think my first choice there generally because lexi doesn't want to block with her equipment but yeah i guess like You've unless no other choice really no yeah that's the point like unless else, so. unless they they suddenly start being on d reacts which i think is not gonna happen anytime soon um i suppose like nerf scalpel just doesn't make a whole lot of sense in that in that scenario if uh, i had the you... cyborg space i would probably run mm -hmm. double spiders by into this matchup okay right but yeah, makes i sense. Do, don't really need it yeah yeah just so you can flick one at some point and still have the other one yeah and then like yeah the rest of the equipment is like default loadout you know just yep. go mask tunic uh flick knives black tags makes sense um this is the default for a reason you know and then i see you bring almost the entire pile except for one remembrance and the three hurls yeah so the hurls blocked for two yeah, here we go. Very nice. The hell's the hell's block for two. Yep. That's as much as it needs to be said. Remembrance is a zero blocker. Sometimes it's not really relevant because they can run out of arrows. And they have no threats after that. So you don't necessarily need the uh, remembrance to get through uh efficient weapons or anything. Yeah. Um, so you bring in all the three blocks, your DVX, yep. your shreds, your yep. spreading at the end of the day. Okay, makes sense. So uh, they decided to go first here, which I think makes sense. They just want that, you know, six arsenal just to go there. And, and I have like dominate stuff. Um, if you won the role, would you go first in this matchup or go second? I think I'd go second. Second, yeah, okay. If, if I hit a CNC to and they set up or mm -hmm. anything like that, it's great. Yeah, okay. Right, that makes sense. So I assume probably they're just gonna set up that that um, six card um, turn yep. here. I don't think they're gonna attack us in this situation, honestly. I feel like it'd be a waste of cards here if they did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There you go. Yeah, they just go. Um, they just go there. Okay. Let's see. Not the, the best hand. Yeah, this hand's kind of a little bit awkward, honestly. So I think I'm just going to lead with the spider spite. Um, try to set up the sink in Arsenal, right? Yeah, so I'm probably, right. probably going to uh, over pitch here. Actually, I don't need to just send the eradicate, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So just me. send the spider spite, um, pitch the spreading here. And I don't think they're going to block that. That's not going to happen. So that Which connects. Is and then I just send the eradicate, pitch this. So now they know we're on a contract list. But I think, honestly, the mask already gives it away. Um, so, yeah, let's see. We got a three of a kind. Awesome. Um, we got yellow as well. We got a yellow, actually. Yeah. So we got one silver. Uh, we got silver an arsenal. Oh, God. Arsenal, uh, a sink. That's actually pretty good. I don't mind this. No, this is great. You got options. That was, that was actually a pretty good um, early turn, yeah. So this is an ice quake. So they're on like a little, they're probably on a little more ice heavy list, I guess. Not mm -hmm. the pure fuses list that a lot of people Looks were like on. like ice quakes and winter bites. Ice quake plus three. So that gives me a frostbite. That's not the worst if it hits only once. Because I can still play out the command with the shred. Mm -hmm. um so the question here is do i block the whole thing can you stop the next hits can i stop everything i don't think i can stop everything but so maybe the frostbites might inter if they if you get hit twice your cnc is no longer playable yeah if i get hit twice it's Correct. rough mm -hmm. so the thing is if i get hit twice i can still send the annihilate unless i block with it so 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking maybe go mask, black text, and then the sync on the Bolton shot. What do you think? I'm not sure wasting the equipment on this because it's got mm -hmm. no real on here off of Frostbite. Mm -hmm. um, using the equipment so early, maybe not worth it. Yeah, maybe just go like Annihilate Slay and then see what they do. I think you can block six here and be fine with it. Yeah, but would you keep the command open? I think so, we're right? Probably not, we're probably not using the command account to this turn. Mm -hmm. I'd get it in Graveyard. Get it in Graveyard, yeah, just mm -hmm. as a Codex target. Yeah, probably not. Okay, I think then I would probably prioritize keeping the Annihilate, right? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so we block this. Because we have to pitch anyways, because we're assuming we'll get a Frostbite at some point during this turn. And we still have the equipment. We have the sink in Arsenal. They flip the Bolton shot. Infecting shot. Okay, that's pretty relevant. Um, and yeah, we can use the mask. For coming in for five incredible. here. Yeah, like mask. This is where... And then probably nice. they're just going to send a Bolton shot, give us a single Frostbite. We can work with that. Mm -hmm. So probably do mask and then sync below. And I'm actually not looking to sync. I like this. You're pretty fine with this, yeah. I think this works, yeah. I can't imagine. Uh, like if they have a rain raises here, mm -hmm. they have a rain raises, sure, but like they're not going to waste it on that. That doesn't make they sense. They were, I feel like they would have used on the first bond mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, did. yeah, yeah. So this is just Bolton shot for two. I'm happy to take that. Give me the mm -hmm. frostbite. That's fair. I can play around it. So that's not too bad. That's overall pretty good. Okay. So we took, ready we took two damage. Um, that's all, which is ideal. And they only have a five card hand now. So that's actually pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to go annihilate. I can't dagger here. Sadly, but not, no. But they're not going to um, block it. Block it they're not no. going to block it. I don't think so. Like, just just, just takes a card from the deck. Um, and they'd have well, to give us two cards here to stop it. So I don't think that's going to happen. With the mask, it's going to be two with the cards. Mask, it's going to be great. Two, yeah. And most likely going to hit. Mm -hmm. Probably going to get at least one silver. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and we got a rain razor. Okay, that's, that's nasty. Animal that's a yeah. really good hit. Uh, that's kind of rough. I do have the blue here. And it's an isolate. Um, or I could discard the death touch and get that into graveyard. If you, uh, if you can keep an isolate for death touch, it's also nice. That's true. That's true. Um, this is tricky. I think you have to pay the three just to loot. So you don't lose cards. Probably pay the three. Yeah. All these feel bad to this guy. Yep. I'm just going to pitch the blue isolate. Just happy. I got the blue here, honestly. And I have another yeah. one. Okay. That that's, that's rough. No, I think you just got the. Uh, fate for scene. I think you I keep the fate for scene. I think you can just discard the, the isolate here. Discard mm, no, the isolate. No, 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 no. You can discard the uh, death touch. I think death touch. Yeah, but yeah. then my turn is just nothing. I don't. It depends if they're going to do another attack here. I mean, um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least one attack coming in. Um, but I don't know. Not sure the fate for scenes. Like I could do isolate in the death touch, and that's a pretty good swing back. I just don't feel comfortable not attacking at all here. Mm -hmm. Um, sure, yeah, the death touch will be work. Do work. Yeah, I think you're in a tricky spot regardless of what you do. Yeah, it's not nice. It all depends on what they follow up with. I mean, I, I could just go like you know, discard the death touch, um, block with the fate, uh, ice and uh, arsenal the isolate because it's a good arsenal target. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the yep. best one. Yeah, save some life. So I'm gonna no, and then discard the death touch. Now let's see what they do. And if they do nothing and ask and set up, you can dagger the mm -hmm. isolate and arsenal the fave scene. Yeah, but fine. I feel there's a there's an attack here. There is definitely an attack here coming. Oh, codex, codex of frailty. Ooh. Okay. I bet you get to get that death touch back for your tunic turn. Yep. 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 That's true. That's actually pretty decent. So this is a drill shot. That's interesting, but I can just cover that with the fate. Um, Sadly, you're going to be losing this isolate. But yeah, but you know, I mean, it. it's okay. Still going to do that. And cut to the chase. Um, I feel like I want to bottom that here. 
It's not going to be. You're going to have to get lucky with it to uh, line up, mm-hmm. and they're going to be pumping no damage. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. So yeah, I would say this is a bottom card here. Yep, bottom that definitely. Yeah. Okay, but I can prevent the damage, uh, the counter from the drill shot. Now obviously they do this, and I will I take the death out. touch, and then you know hit, losing the isolate kind of hurts, but you know what can I do? Taking seven here is right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I just take seven here. Sadly, yeah, you have yeah. nothing you can do. Yeah. <clears throat> like I could prevent one with the black text, but that's not worth it. Those winters bias were rude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two strong. two red ones. That was rough. Yeah. yeah. Just gonna get the mask back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then just Free, you got an extra life here. Tunic into death touch. I mean, it, it's for five. But, you know, I don't think they're going to block that. Five if they do, it takes them two cards anyways, yeah. no matter how they do it. So, And then I assume if this hits, we're going for frailty every time, right? Yeah. Yep. In this scenario, you definitely go, this, go frailty. If they have, like, a big hand. Like, if they already blocked some stuff, I would go, like, inertia to stop them from setting up something. Yes. But I think in this situation, if they let that connect, I'm going frailty just to, to fade some extra damage because like frailty on a typical Lexi turn is like at least two health, very probably three. Okay, they're just going to let that hit. I'm not going to commit the mask here, obviously, because that's not worth it. And then we're choosing the frailty. And I cannot pay for the blood rot. Uh, that's another two that I'm taking. Ah, okay, that are aces is not great here. Mm. Generally, it's, this entire hand is kind of... It's You're going to have to pitch a card anyway for any D-React. So, that's the Oasis true. isn't the worst. Cause that's, actually not so, that's actually not so bad. Yeah, you're true. That's true. I don't really have a turn. Like, no. That's kind of rough, but you know, what can you do? It'll happen. Hopefully, um, this yeah, frailty... The Oasis gonna, actually isn't so bad. Either. a lot mm-hmm. better to uh, deal with. Mm-hmm. Whatever they send at you. Okay, infecting shot. That's nice because that's now covered up by. Oh no, it's it's for seven. Okay. Mm. <sighs> I'm almost tempted to double block this with the sink and the aces. I think you can. Just because it's nine, it's nine damage. You know. So let's go again. It's probably going to be a four coming afterwards, mm-hmm. which you can probably put three and a uh, mask mm-hmm. in front of. Yeah, yep. that, could, that definitely could work. So double block this, pitch the shred to pay for the frostbite. Only, uh, actually, if you pop three here and block with a D-React. All right, that's that's better, yeah. Might probably be better. better where you can, if, mm-hmm. they send a zero, if they send a one for five afterwards, mm-hmm. You can do that with a D-reactor mask. Okay, so I just go like uh, surgical, block Probably surgical, shred. block Probably the shred, shred, pitch the yeah. surgical. Okay, yeah. Shred's useless in this matchup. Block the shred. True, yeah, makes sense. That's true. So they might have a reaction here. Maybe they have like a rain razors. They don't. Um, so now I'm gonna sink, I think. Yeah. I think you um, want an Oasis. Oasis, yeah. Okay. So Oasis, pitch that. Um, and then, then you can... Uh, if... mm-hmm. Yeah, if they do nothing, I can Arsenal the sink. True. That's a They're better They're probably choice. not going to do nothing, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's definitely true. So, okay. We don't take any damage from this. Oh, nice. They, they, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. They pitch the Arctic here. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you were correct. So we're just gonna block mask and then yeah. put clean the blocks. sink down there. Just clean blocks. Very nice. And now you both re- reset. Both your four card hand. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. True. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. So we're just gonna pass. Just get that tunic counter. Oh, leave no witnesses. Perfect. Here we go. This is a good hand. Perfect one card hand. And if they leave <laughs> us some other cards. So I think on the Bolton shot here. Um, you probably have to probably block, block two cards. 
Yeah, they've just pitched a red. That means oh, they don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to give there. them. I don't want to give them the free. Um, free the reload. Free reload, free reload mm. will be huge, saving resources. So I'm, yeah. I'm guessing I go E strike plunder on the blocks I'll, here. I would go E strike shred. Okay. Send uh, leave no witnesses. Arsenal the plunder. If we can go plunder the poor into leave no witnesses, that's going to be a lot of silver. Ooh, okay, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. If they allow it, but I don't mm -hmm. think they do. We shall see. So, yeah. If they do, we're going to have to block with the leave no, uh, the plunder mm -hmm. the poor. I mean, I think if they if they do another arrow here, I think I'd actually block with the leave no witnesses because they're not going to have an arsenal if they send another arrow here in this situation. Uh, true, yeah. Plunder the poor is going to be more silver. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So they had like... Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely committing uh, the black text here. Oh, this is coming for five. Damn. Okay, this is rough. This is where I might double block this as well. Um, yeah, or alternatively, I block with plunder and then send a leave no witnesses because I know they have an arsenal now. True. That is a possibility. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's the right Just call. block three on the, with the plunder. Um, and then just... Yeah. The just to save some life, send a leave no witnesses and either make them double block, you know? Yeah, um, or just uh, get, get me some silver, you know? So just going to send that course. great one-card hand. It's like a... C and C that costs nothing. Yeah, and they double block here. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they want to protect that endless arrow because they, they've caught on to the fact that I'm going to fatigue here. Probably. And then this smells like rain they raises. Just send the endless arrow. That's interesting. Okay. Um I think you blocked two cards in. I yeah, will probably block two here, yeah. Um I'm thinking, what do I block with here? Probably I mean, if I could keep a three-card hand, it was this would be good. I can I could do shakedown and then activate it with the mask. What do you think? Or just send the leave no witnesses. I think you send the one card hand still. Yeah. If you can see, yeah. So I block with like shakedown and shred. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Mm -hmm. I leave you with two cards, shred. I can and still dagger. Or I just do leave no witnesses and then shred it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So I do it through. I, I block six. Yeah, that's fair. And now, even if they, if, I mean, maybe if they, they play. Here, it feels bad. If it would yeah, be yeah, bad. Yeah. So I'm fine with that if they snaps here. Yeah, but honestly, ah, they run lightning yeah. press. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, if, they, if they're if they like on a slightly weird Lexi build with like attack reactions, yeah, they baited Which... that. Um, but that's that's fair, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, they're gonna be checking that back in Arsenal, and you're gonna be threatening it again. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So I'm very happy to just send the leave no witnesses, and if they double block it, I can shred mask, get a ton mm -hmm. of value out of this. Mm -hmm. Yep, they double Perfect. block. Perfect. So I just. Uh, shred this. And okay, I'm shredding that. And then mask on top. Perfect. Lovely. Uh, got that. Got the ice quake. So I got two silver. And I get the mask straight back. And they have a two card hand in their turn. Yep. Love to see it. Okay, so they tunic. Voltaire. <laughs> yeah, and it, folks. Uh, wait, that was. Oh, they didn't actually send it. Oh, I was thinking, but this is lovely. I have frailty this trap. This is set up. You can arsenal that frailty. I can arsenal that, that frailty. That's pretty good. So I'll re equip the mask. And now oh, I'm thinking. You have some choices here. Mm, I'm thinking. Uh, tunic, shakedown, pitch the sink below, and then shred it to activate it. Yeah, if they don't shred it, uh, if they like, don't block it, 
you have to use mask. But if they don't block it, I have to use mask. But I'm assuming. Or you can use. Uh, I think you know. I think you use flick for the scale peeler if they do. Mm -hmm. If they don't. Mm -hmm. don't okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Just flick the scale peeler, just because um, I don't really need it in that matchup, just to preserve the block on the mask. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that seems pretty good. So tunic. Um, I mean, you could dagger here to make shakedown awkward to block anyway, so you can just guarantee the hit. Maybe, but down. I mean, I need tunic anyways. Like, so yes, you're gonna, you're gonna need yeah. tunic regardless of the time. I think but... I think I want. A, yeah, I could use I could use spider spy, I guess, but then I'm forced to flick. You know, like if I do it this way and they block it, I can just shred and get maximum mm -hmm. value. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's still a, probably a better play here. Uh, they don't they block. block. They just go yep. no blocks. That's about right. So you right. like the skill anyway. Yep. That's how it goes. Maybe they have a D-React now or some shit, but I doubt it. Click the scale peeler. It's just one damage. And now this is live. And I assume we always pick red here, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Banished a searing shot. Nice. Searing shot. Okay, what else did they have? Like bone yeah, shot, no codex of frailty. Okay, and the fatigue shot. All right, so they have a. They're probably looking to start a turn with a bone shot blue here, um, just because it's the only one that really lets them go wide. Mm -hmm. And so you want this that is I definitely arsenal. arsenal that frailty, just because like shred. You don't generally, if you're watching this, you don't want to arsenal a shred. Like oh, arsenaling no. a shred. Uh huh. So okay, they are rain razoring this time. Sending the bolt and shot. They might have a rain raises in Arsenal. I'm pretty sure they have a rain raises in Arsenal at this so point. Definitely some rain raises. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is, do we double block this? Because I think you can block three and say just use the frailty trap on it mm -hmm. for the other three, and then just give them a frailty when like straight away. So like I just block three. And then frailty trap or just the frailty trap? Um, actually, you can you can block one here with the mask, mm -hmm. and then just frailty afterwards. Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends if they got lightning press. If they got lightning press, it doesn't work. Yeah, just, I would say block three. If it's a rain raises like this, it's gonna go up to five, right? So yes, if it's a lightning press, it goes to six. Okay, I think I off. just block three here with the annihilate, yeah. and then just see what they do, basically. If it's a lightning press, um, I still cover it, actually, if it's a lightning yeah. press with the frailty well, trap. So. Yeah, with, and the frailty, and it covers anyway. And if they do nothing here, okay, they do nothing. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a rain raises. Fair enough. Oh. So I'm going to let that resolve. Is it, this is the situation. If you click the frailty trap here now, before the rain raises resolve, it won't actually activate. Yes. So you need to wait for the rain raises to resolve before you send the frailty trap from Arsenal. Um, and that way, yeah, like, I mean, it's okay. Not the worst. Still gonna save a bunch of health here. Okay, they prioritize the fatigue shot. I guess that makes sense. Um, I think I just go mask, eradicate, and then send the CNC. Well, this, they've got a codex. Ah, they've got a codex, that's right. That's true. the last turn. So, How do I uh, do this? you're losing your entire hand here, probably. Mm -hmm. um, They've got one floating, so it's probably going to be a one cost error. Mm -hmm. um, I still think I block this out just because yeah. I don't want to lose whatever I get with the Codex of Frailty here, which is probably going to be a Leave No Witnesses. I think yeah. it's, it's probably the most, spring, but... most impactful one I can oh, get uh, here. You know. So I'm just going to go Mask and then Eradicate. That frailty doing its job. I don't know. Leave no witnesses for three also just feels kind of bad, to be honest. Because yeah. I can just single card block it and there's not much I can do. Yeah. I it's guess a... I guess I could I could keep the shred. I could depending eat, what they get here. Depending on what they get here, I could eat but the it's shred. Probably gonna be six damage. Yeah, heat seeker. They got the heat seeker, yeah. Hmm. I mean that's coming in for 
Six. For four, actually. Oh, no, six. Yeah, true, because of the yeah. rain raises. Rain raises. So I can't full block it anyways. No. I think I'm just going to eat this. Keep the shred, send the leave yeah. the witnesses, and then shred that and make it connect. Um, I think you grab the C and C. Really? Yeah. Oh, and then the keep the shred. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yes, they are, they'll have a double They'll have arsenal. a double arsenal. Yeah, okay, yes. okay. So now I discard the CNC, grab the CNC, and now I'm just going to have to eat that heat seeker. I mean, it's yep. not great, puts me to 22, but I still have got, yep. a, got a pretty healthy life lead over them at this point. Mm hmm. And that frail, I mean, parts. just think about it. That frailty trap effectively was like a one card five block, essentially, because we overblocked on the first attack. But um, so, yeah, well, I think we're just going to eat this. It's not great. Kind of hurts. But that's Codex of Frailty, you know, not really yeah, anything you can do really about much around it. We haven't seen it down and dirty, so. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen one of our own Codexes, actually. Right, so they, those must be yeah. coming up at some point. Um, so the thing is, it's a command and conquer. That's a two card block for them, and mm -hmm. they have to block it. There's no way around it. So we just send that. They're losing two cards regardless. How yep. No matter what they way. do, they lose two cards either from Arsenal or from hand, unless they're willing. Like no, they can't commit New Horizon because then they lose the Arsenal as well. So yeah, that'll be three cards. No matter what they do, this is two cards. So that's a, I'm pretty happy with that swing back, actually. Yeah. I mean, so again, we're leading, the, we're leading in life, we're leading in cards. Mm -hmm. So far, it cards seems like on. the pressure's They're on them. Like cards. Yeah, the pressure's on them to find lethal. And we've already seen, what, like two Rain Razors, because we banished one. Uh, we've seen two Codex of Frailties. And I think we banished one of the three of a kinds, and they haven't actually played one so far. Yeah, I feel like this will probably be one of them. They're uh, three of a kind terms. Yeah, probably. Seems like it, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not, actually. What? Interesting. They're just Sorry. sending a drill shot for two. They might have two snaps here. They might, yeah. I mean, I'm still. I still want to block this just because I don't want the. I don't want the thing. Um, what do I block that with? I feel. Yeah, it's a tough one here. Do I aces is aces is kind of messing us up. Yeah, those are those are coming really at situations where you don't really want to see them. Um, I guess the isolate. As as rough as that is. Um. Or pitch the isolate and use the oasis, but that also feels kind of bad. I wouldn't use the oasis on this, no. I mm. think you have to... Because I can do, like, plunder the poor, and if they don't block it, crack black tags uh, into leaving the witnesses on my next turn with the codex, right? That feels pretty good. I think you're okay not blocking this. Okay. I guess then I'm just going to block it with the black text, right? Well, if they put on your black text, it's a win for you. Um, I wouldn't do it because it forces that. It means block on flicks. I don't think you need to. That's true, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to not block it. Fair enough. Just going to eat it. Let's see awesome. where, they, where they go with and if, it. If that's their turn, you're very happy with this. Mm -hmm. It is their turn, actually. They put it on Tunic, too. That's weird. Because Tunic feels like the last equipment I want to block with. Honestly, in most cases. Yeah. Okay, I can work with this. Like, it's not great because it kind of messes with the codex, but um, let's see. What can we do here? Um, probably, yeah, this works, I think. I can do spider spite, over pitch the oasis so I don't have to mm -hmm. discard it, send a plunder, crack the boots, codex into leaving the witnesses. Or well, even death, got, even death touch points. at that point. So or even CNC. Oh, got uh, floating, CNC. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So we go like this. Uh, over pitch like this. And if they block two cards here, you've also won this trade. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh. So plunder the poor. Feels a little bad to give up the black text block value here, but you know. Mm -hmm. uh, question is, do I use mask here as well? Yes. Probably. That will buy, yeah. your, buy, your, that will buy your, uh, whatever you want back. Probably instantly. buy it buy it back in that situation. So they've, I'm going to crack mask. only got one box. One yeah. cost, sorry. 
and black text. Okay. And yeah, we got the two silver back. Great. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Got a heat seeker. That's also a pretty good one. And then play the I codex. And now get uh, another CNC because they've got a double arsenal. Yep. I just, this just feels kind of oppressive just, at this it, point. It. I don't know. How oh, they, defensive uh, art of war. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also a win for us. Yep, absolutely. They don't. Have, they they can't play it off tunic. So absolutely a win because they are like. Yeah, to pitch they, another art of war for yeah, it as yeah. well. Yeah. Pitch an art of war. Play an art of war block with the two cards from Arsenal. So they're like on a two card hand and they have a frailty token. And, and we got, we isolate get a, oh, get a free man. Arsenal and isolate. Oh man. Not the best hand to have an isolate in Arsenal, honestly, but you know. I think that's right. fine then. You get to, to go, you get to block seven minutes. Like you got seven block here and you mm -hmm. can slay into cut. If they even attack, honestly. Mm -hmm. I could see them not attacking, just setting up something. Oh, they okay, they attack, they tunic. Ah, they have a rain raises three of a kind turn. Okay, that's pretty fair. That's that's a pretty good two card hand for Alexi, but they okay, that's it. I conceded. Ah, GG's. Yeah, I don't see them coming back from that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if they did just draw a dud hand there. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay, I can't write GG. I guess they already disconnected here. Um. I'm trying my best. I don't want to look like an ass here, <laughs> but it's not working. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, that was a, a Lexi matchup. Um, mm. Obviously oh. we're at a slight advantage because this is like two people, you know, like I got the, mm. the benefit of hindsight. I got another pair of eyes to kind of correct what I'm doing. Um, so not every Lexi matchup is going to work like this, but I think this is generally the idea, right? Like you're trying yep. to, just draw back to back threats um and obviously it's not going to line up like that every time um no. but that's the if general you, idea if you need to block you can always block yep you can just full block well. um and just set it up you know just don't let them get a life lead on you because that's going to get uncomfortable at some point but uh exactly. if your hand just doesn't do anything that's why almost the entire deck is like three blocks you know you can just yes. full block a turn um just be like okay i'm gonna wait for a better hand that actually offers some disruption uh or i keep like a single card that's a banisher just keep a single contract um get some cards out of them maybe get a little bit of silver uh get the mask cycling around so this felt pretty good to play honestly i love the silver generation aspect of the assassin class and that's really something that i've been missing uh, when playing Redline Azuri. Um, yeah. Because she does it. almost none of that um, in the deck. Like, maybe you get to buy back boots once a game, and that's pretty much it. And here, I mean, we got, what, like, three activations out of Mask? You're about to buy them back again. Mm -hmm. uh, of your boots back again as yep. well. So I've been your second... Well, you used boots once in that game? Boots once, yeah. You buy them no, back. I didn't You're even block them with them. Again. I didn't even block with them before no. yeah. when I could have. Um, so like the, the mask alone was like three points of life that we got in that matchup um, just from the silver generation. And obviously yeah. just having these extra breakpoint blocks against a ranger deck is so good to have, you know, like just yeah. being able to be, okay, I can do like mask plus a sink to cover a five arrow. I can do mask plus a three block to cover a four arrow, you know, um, mm -hmm. that's really good. And that's something like, uh, Redline Izuri also struggles a little bit with that because the deck doesn't block very well, you know? Um, I do find the equipment block in Redline a lot more limiting. It is, it is a lot more limiting. Like, you know, you've got the battle-worn boots, but you can only block with those once. You know, you're not really getting them back unless you get lucky. Uh, you've got Crown of Providence, which is obviously fantastic. Uh, very good equipment slot. Um, but being able to just recycle the mask will actually give you more health over the course of a game. And I find that in Azuri, the uh, arsenal cycling that you can do with Crown of Providence is not that relevant because there's like basically every single card in this deck 
doesn't mind if it's sitting in Arsenal, maybe with the exception of Shred. Like Shred, got, Shred in Shred. Arsenal doesn't feel great in a in, lot of cases. In this deck, I think you've got three targets for bad Arsenal mm -hmm. cards, and that is um, Shreds, mm -hmm. Spreading Plagues, mm -hmm. and, sense, cut yeah. to, and cut, cut to the Chase. Honestly, I feel like, yeah, Cut to the Chase isn't great, but I feel like it's probably the best of the three because like, yeah. you want to keep a one-card hand with a single contract a lot of the times anyways. Uh, and then you can just, you know, use the Cut to the Chase on that the next time it comes up. You know, like it's not going to clog up your arsenal the way a Shred might, might, you know, if they never block and you have a Shred in arsenal, it's stuck. You can't do anything with it. So same when, with a spread. When it, plague, gets, same uh, when it gets clunky with cut to the chase, it's generally when you don't have boots live and you've drawn a uh, mm -hmm. a codex as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You want. So you can't even play the codex, or you played a. We've got codex and no contract, or mm -hmm. any attack and no contract mm -hmm. in hand. That mm -hmm. card's just stuck in Arsenal. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so, have you thought about? actually swapping cut to the chase for maybe a front pump something like a nimblism or even like a come to fight uh, if you want to avoid uh, the two blocks because i remember like back in the arachne days mm -hmm. there was a couple arachne decks that were on come to fight just because it's yeah. a three block it's a front pump um so you can pump up eradicate rough, which is the issue one cost is a little yeah you kind of need tunic life for that and as and... we've seen there's already a bunch of things that you want to use tunic for um the to, to chase when it goes off is very powerful mm -hmm. um and it's for that purpose it's fine in the deck as a three block mm -hmm. i find yeah you true. just need to know when you can hold it or block with it mm -hmm. it's and a card that you need to maybe sometimes set up for it if yeah, you need to late game true it's if a situation you, we, saw off the, uh, we saw off the fate for scene for example mm -hmm. and if you see that in that situation and there's some times where if you have silver and a blue in hand mm -hmm. you can go cool i can grab it and draw it and use it that turn right yeah or you can sink it to the bottom and mm -hmm. make sure you can pitch it with other cards like if you can get a surgical down and pitch after you've sunk it mm -hmm. that makes late sense. game that's gonna line up and that's gonna be perfect yeah, 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 like if you can go surgical the and then just make that hit for seven when they don't really expect it'll happen. Or yeah. I imagine you can even set up like a, a late game threat where you pitch like two of them, you know? Uh, and then you just have the like, you just have a, a, a contract hitting for 10 and the opponent yeah. has to be like, okay, uh, I'm low on health. Do I triple block this? Because mm -hmm. I know he has like the two cut to the chases down here somewhere um so in, in that regard it has like a similar purpose to you know um a little bit of what like the isolate raises edge thing is doing in red light yeah. uzuri red light sure, yeah. actually sorry not red light uzuri that's a very different um deck um and yeah and i imagine like especially if you manage to line that up with a spreading plague mm-hmm Oh, yeah. That is just backbreaking. I mean, that's going to come up like maybe once every 100 games or so that you can actually line those cards up that way. That you can mm -hmm. do like, okay, I have a contract, uh, two cut to the chases and a spreading plague available to me. And I can go like, okay, you're dead no matter what you do. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. But it happens. Uh, it'll it'll happen at some point. And, <laughs> and that's that's probably when you feel the best about running this deck. This is like the moment where you're like, okay, this is the equivalent to like the 40 damage Berserk Blood Rush Bellow Brute mm -hmm. Turn, you know? The feel good moment of the deck where you're mm -hmm. like, okay, this is why I play this deck, these kind of situations, even I when feel... they're pretty rare. But when you manage uh... to set that up and it lines up the right way, that's got to feel amazing. Definitely. Yeah. With a cut to the chase as well, it gets over the problem of blocking six against Azuri. Mm -hmm. True, true. <laughs> If you can cover six with your D React and a two block or something, mm -hmm. cut to the chase on your four power, mm -hmm. even though it is or surgical or eradicate, finally gets like yep. pump gets over. Yeah. Seven mark where you can just consistently use boots or something. Yeah, like that, that actually, because I felt, you know, um, 
I remember back in the the original red line list, right? That uh, uh, Ben Dot um, started. He was originally not on surgical extraction, and mm -hmm. I know I think by now he is. He moved to it, um, yeah. but I can definitely see why he was hesitant about it at first. Not just because of the the fact that it's a blue, right? And it kind of interferes with like the, the fact that he was running a whole bunch of uh, rebels, uh, ravenous rebels, um, but also because you don't run cut to the chase, right? Um, so unless you manage to pair it up with a shred, it's not really a good swap target. And even um, then it's kind of easy to block out a, mm -hmm. with the rex if they do with it, even paired with a shred sometimes. Yeah, true. It's, I make, it, it makes up. sense, yeah. Um, and with the cut to the chase, you can reliably just put it at seven, just put it over the top and, and force it to connect kind of, because like most people expect Uzuri swaps to, to, you know, come in for six. Mm -hmm. They're not really expecting the seven. So I imagine if you can manage to hold that in that way, um, it's just like another shred, right? That you can just put on mm -hmm. that surgical extraction or leave the witnesses and do some stuff with it. Just re just requiring them not to have to interact for you to get the value out of it though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I sure mean, in, in that, in that, in that regard, I think Lexi is probably one of our, I don't want to say easier matchups. You, you can definitely get just completely steamrolled by a Lexi because they can just dump out so much damage. But I feel just the fact that they're typically not running any kind of defensive cards whatsoever. They're not, they don't have the space to run D reacts in the deck. And I think that just puts us at an inherent advantage over them, right? Because mm -hmm. everything they do is face value, right? Like if they block six, uh, we just don't swap. I, okay, they it can't block be... six because the only, the only stealth card is isolate, but you know. We um, might see more frailty traps come in. That could be. Just for the mirror, because right. it's so good in the mirror. That's true. Yeah, and I mean they um, might they might have like one or two boulder traps in the in the deck mm -hmm. just for old him, and they might decide to bring them um, for the Uzuri matchup just because they're expecting attack reaction shenanigans, and you know they'd be right to. So yeah, that could be... uh, at that point, I think nerf nerf uh, nerf scalpel is the correct choice. Mm -hmm. Start running instead over scale people. Uh, yeah. scale like, I mean, the scale peel is not really doing much in the matchup, so maybe you just want to run, you know, you just want to run the nerf scalpel regardless. Just hedge your yeah. bets in just in case they have it, you know. And the great part is most of the D reacts that they're going to bring are probably going to be traps. So they're three yeah. blocks, which means that even if they do like block the isolate and then trap, uh, you can flick and actually get your command and conquer to connect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so that's it's actually easier, yeah. that's pretty good because most people run like the sinks and the fates right and uh, the the flick doesn't do a lot there because they block seven so even if you flick it it goes down mm -hmm. to six it doesn't do much um, but against the traps uh, it's actually pretty relevant all right Definitely, yeah. um, so that was great um, I hope you enjoyed this deck tech video with the small gameplay demonstration that we did in the end um, if you have any questions about this deck, put them down in the comments below, um, or you can find me and you can find Oli on the Uzuri Discord channel. I'm also going to put a link uh, down to that uh, in the description. Um, if you have any questions about it, uh, the Uzuri community is honestly fantastic. Lots of great players in there that are just exploring this hero and seeing what she can do. Lots of different builds out there that you can try out for yourself. Um, hop on over, um, join us for a chat. It's always lovely. Um, mm -hmm. And that wraps up this video. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.